Hipsters will be able to evaluate an expression. using correct order of operations. First thing I want you to do is I want you to tell me the values of all of the expressions below. So go ahead and quickly jot down. Here I'm not going to ask you to show any work. Just for time's sake, I want you to evaluate all of the expressions below. I'll give you about 30 seconds to do that. Okay, somebody with a raised hand. The first expression. What is, what is the value of the first expression? Is it here? Second expression, what is the value of the second expression? Jalen. Third expression, what is the value of the third expression? Jesus. He says two. And that's right, because that's the opposite of negative two. And the last expression, Jesslyn. It's negative one times negative two. So the whole point of having you do this is to recognize that these two expressions are exactly the same. They give us the same value. And we hinted very briefly at this last week, this idea that multiplying by a negative one switched the inequality symbol. By thinking about that multiplication of negative 1, meaning that you were going to be finding the opposite of. And so here we found very clearly that that is true. And we also found that it was true regardless of whether it was the only thing going on or whether it was a larger expression as well. They're the same thing. So that should lead us to that next question. How can we mathematically replace a negative sign? What can I replace a negative sign with? Axel? Um, I don't see any absolute value in any of these problems here, so we were able to replace negative signs with something that was equivalent. How were we able to mathematically replace those negative signs? How could we rewrite these expressions that had negative signs with something a little bit different? Looking at this, how can I replace this negative sign? How did we write that differently right next to it? Jalen. We said these two expressions were equivalent. One of them has just a negative sign. One of them has something different. How did we replace it? Axel. How did we replace it in this expression over here? Jesus. So he says we added a one, which makes this operation... What is this operation right here? A negative one in front of it. Jefferson. It's a multiplication of a negative one. So how can we mathematically replace a negative symbol that's all by itself? Multiplication of zero. Or, sorry, multiplication of negative one. A negative is the same thing as multiplying by negative one. In words, we can replace
a negative with a multiplication of negative 1. So that's going to become really important when we start thinking about order of operations because sometimes when we just have those negatives there, it's hard to tell where it goes. When am I going to evaluate that just negative symbol? Well, now we know that evaluation is going to happen as a multiplication. So let's remind ourselves really quickly about order of operations. I'm going to get rid of P because I don't like P anymore. Because we know more than just parentheses. We're going to call this G, which is going to stand for grouping symbols. Grouping symbols can be parentheses, they can be brackets, they can be absolute value symbols. Those are all sets of grouping symbols. Those will always go first in order of operations. Now the E, E stands for what? Dunno. Exponent. Exponents. M stands for? Oh yeah, multiplication. Jalen, division. Now, no, it's fine. These two can happen interchangeably. You can multiply, you can divide. It doesn't matter really which order you do them in. A is for Jesus. And S, Navi. These also can happen interchangeably. And for the most part, we're actually going to just take subtractions and then go ahead and change switch them. Okay, let's do a quick review of exponents. 4 to the 6th, how can I rewrite 4 to the 6th? Four times four times four times four times four. So remember, that's not 4 times 6, because that's definitely not the same thing. If we start multiplying that out, 4 times 4 is 16, 16, 16, 16 times 16, 16 is 256. times 16 more And that's just a reminder. Something we should know about exponents is it's not 4 times 6. It's 4 times itself 6 times. That's what that exponent means. All right? So um, the first example we're going to work with here is um, this is an equation. Uh, this equation actually comes from a roller coaster. Um, it is describing 
the force if we're thinking about a you know car on a roller coaster this describes the amount of force that the track is putting on the ride car at a given time okay so force that the track is putting on the ride car that's what f sub t stands for the m sub c over here stands for the mass of the ride car itself. M sub P stands for the mass of the people on the car. V stands for the velocity of the car. That's how fast it's going. And R is the radius of the loop that they are going on. Okay, so this is for the force of track on a car, on a roller coaster car, when it's going through a loop. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to substitute in all of the values. So F sub T is equal to M sub C, which is 1,000. That's the mass of the car, plus M sub P, which is 100. That's the mass of the people, times the velocity squared, so that's 6 squared over r, which is 3.6 minus 10. So all we've done here is substitute in the values. And we're going to label that this step was a substitution. And this is going to become part of being able to describe, when you're using order of operations, exactly what you did. So remember, we're moving into common cores, being this idea of being able to describe what you did. So this is kind of a way, without writing an entire sentence, of showing me that you know that what you did here was substitute. And we're going to start doing this a lot, labeling our steps. Navi, do you have a question? Okay, sorry. That hand looked kind of like a question. All right. So the next thing that we need to do, well, we need to start following order of operations. So kind of off to the side, I'm thinking to myself, well, Jim Das, first thing that I need to do says I need to do what? Jalen. Yeah, the stuff in parentheses. So we've actually got two sets of parentheses here. And here's the weird thing. There's actually more than one thing going on in this second set of parentheses. Okay? So within a set of parentheses, we have to follow order of operations inside that set of parentheses. So for now, I'm actually going to focus only on this one set of parentheses. So it's almost kind of like I'm going to ignore everything else for a moment. I'm just going to focus right here. So within that set of parentheses, I need to follow order of operations. So within this set of parentheses, what operation do I have to do first? Again, looking back over at our order of operations, there are no grouping symbols inside this set of parentheses. So the next thing I would move on to would be what? Yes, ma'am. Exponent. So I have an exponent here, and so I'm going to do this one at a time. The only thing I'm going to do in this step is the exponent, 6 squared. 6 squared, or 6 to the second power, is what? Danilo? 36. 36. And I'm going to rewrite everything else. And I didn't change anything with this set of parentheses yet, so I'm just going to write it down as well. And this is where that very simple step-by-step -step process that I've talked about with all of your families starts to come into play. And your explanation is that inside the grouping symbol, you did exponents. So our real step here is that we're working on grouping symbols, but inside that grouping symbol, we had to do the exponent first. Okay, I'm still inside that grouping symbol, and I've still got more operations to do. What's next, Jalen? Uh, what's next is you have to do uh, 36 over 3 divided by 3 plus. 
So he recognizes this as a division, 36 divided by 3.6. Yikes. Okay. We're going to ignore that then. 36 divided by 3.6. And that's all we're going to replace here. 36 divided by 3.6, I'm going to tell you is 10. And we're going to just rewrite everything else. One step at a time. And as my explanation, I'm still inside grouping symbols. And inside that grouping symbol, I did division first. I'm going to come back to that set of grouping symbols, and I'm going to do my last operation. 10 minus 10 is... Rashida, 10 minus 10? 0. And I'm going to rewrite everything else. And my explanation over here is going to be inside the grouping symbol. I did my subtraction. We still have a different set of grouping symbols, so we've still got one more step that we have to do here. So now we're going to move over to this set of grouping symbols. There's only one operation inside this set of grouping symbols, so we're going to add them together. So we will get f sub t is equal to 1,100 times 0. And our explanation is that inside this grouping symbol, we did our addition. And so one thing that we should notice is that our order of operations within those set of grouping symbols was still in order, okay? And then our last step, we actually only have one operation left, f sub t is equal to 1,100 times 0, which is David, 1,100 times 0 is what? 0. And our explanation for that is we moved on to multiplication. And so what we should also see is that when we're coming down our line, we should see that these will always follow order of operations. If they haven't, then we know something's wrong. All right? Let's do the next one. So next one, they've given us everything. Looking at this expression, the first thing that we need to do is what? Well, thinking about order of operations, we need to deal with grouping symbols. And so I've actually got two sets of grouping symbols here. I've got this set of grouping symbols, which are these brackets. And then inside them, I have parentheses. So we're always going to be thinking about the outermost set of grouping symbols, but then be thinking about order of operations inside them. So kind of right now, it's like I'm ignoring everything except for this. And I need to be following order of operations inside this set of grouping symbols. So inside this set of grouping symbols, what should I be doing first? Axel and Jalen cannot be the only person participating today. Inside the set of grouping symbols, what do I need to do first? Just not. Oh, oh, right inside the bracket. I mean, um, parentheses. 
Yeah, the parentheses. So inside the grouping symbols, we need to do the grouping symbols first. So I'm thinking about right now, the first thing I need to do is the grouping symbol inside the grouping symbol, which is 6 plus negative 2 is 4. And I'm just going to rewrite everything else. Everything else stays exactly the same. And my explanation for that is that I was working on the grouping symbol, and inside that grouping symbol, I was working on the. What did I work on inside the grouping symbol? David? Wasn't subtraction, I mean, we ended up doing a subtraction, but nested inside that grouping symbol was what? Yeah, another grouping symbol. Okay, we still have some stuff inside that grouping symbol, so I'm still going to be working inside the grouping symbol. Need to be following order of operations inside this grouping symbol. Jefferson? Um, yep, so I need to do the exponent, which is 3 to the second power. What is 3 to the second power? It's the same thing as 3 times 3, which is 9. So I'm just going to write down that 9. And everything else is going to stay. And so our justification is that we were working inside the grouping symbol and we did exponents. Still inside this set of grouping symbols. Navi, what do I need to do inside the set of grouping symbols now? Uh, four. Okay, so you just add. Yeah, there's nothing left to do. There's only one type of operation left, and that's addition. So inside the set of grouping symbols, I'm going to do the addition. And we can add it all across, all at the same time, since it's all addition. 4 plus 4 plus 9 is 17. So now we've taken care of everything inside our grouping symbols. And we're left with 2 plus 3 times 17. So what's the first order of operations here? Jalen. So... Basically, once we have nothing but a single number inside that grouping symbol, that grouping symbol comes to represent a multiplication. So we want to go ahead and do our multiplication. Seventeen times three is thirty-four is fifty-one. And now there's only one step left. That's the addition. It's fifty-three. So again, what we should recognize is that within our set of grouping symbols, we followed order of operations, and then in total, we followed order of operations. That's kind of like your check, making sure that nothing is out of order with inside your grouping symbols, and nothing is out of order over here. Okay? This is how I expect you to show your work any time that you are evaluating expressions. That means from now on, you also, on your homework, need to have this off to the side, where you are quickly showing me how you're following order of operations. Does everybody understand how this work off to the right-hand side is shown? If not, ask a question right now. Or just raise your hand so I can clarify. Okay, so basically each step we're explaining what we're doing. If we're inside a grouping symbol, 
we're saying what step we're doing inside the grouping symbol. So I have grouping symbol, and inside that grouping symbol, I actually did the parentheses or the grouping symbol. The next step I did, I was still inside the grouping symbol, and I did the exponent portion. So that's I've got G exponent. Um, inside that grouping symbol was still, now I did all the addition, so I've got G addition. And then my next step was the multiplication. So I did multiplication, last step, addition, okay? So each step you're explaining how you got there. All right.